When they invaded, they arrived by plane and air. They arrived by boat and sea. They may have even arrived on the heel of a shoe or were released because people didn't want to take care of them anymore. Now the battle for our environment is on. Scientists and engineers with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in partnership with state and other federal agencies across the U.S. are in a daily struggle to keep non-native plants and animals under control. It's not an easy task. Non-natives typically don't have natural predators in their new foreign homes. No place like home. This means they can grow and multiply without having a natural means of population control. Without human intervention to keep these invasives in check, major damage can occur to not only the environment, but the economy as well. Across the United States, species like zebra and quagga mussels, introduced to their new home by the result of ballast water discharge from ships, clog water intake pipes for everything from power generation stations to water supply. They also remove the food sources for native species, affecting the food chain in many of our lakes and rivers. These little guys can cause great harm, and their migration isn't over. They like to travel. They attach themselves to recreational boats and go along for the ride as unsuspecting boaters pull out of one lake and put into another. Once in the new lake, the mussels just found a new home. Asian carp, also known as big head, silver, black, and grass carp, one of which, the silver carp, will hit you in the face literally. These fishies, who performed a jailbreak from aquaculture facilities in the Mississippi River drainage basin, like to jump around, get up and get down, and into motorboats. It is not uncommon for a boater to encounter one of these as they cruise along. The carp compete with native species for food supply, dining on valuable plankton, which native mussels and fish depend on. A major effort to keep these guys out of the Great Lakes is underway. An underwater electrical barrier fence is deployed near Chicago, Illinois to deter the fish from traveling any further up the river systems and into the lakes. On land, feral pigs throughout much of the United States are having impacts as well. Introduced into the wild by escaping from or being released by pet owners, these animals have established quite the homestead. Feral hogs breed quickly and their numbers are expanding. They pose a serious threat because they destroy fields and their wallows affects ponds and wetlands, muddying the water and destroying the aquatic vegetation. You don't want to say here piggy piggy to these guys. They are aggressive and they can weigh up to 440 pounds and the males have tusks. Just saying. While in South Florida, Burmese python, also released by or escaping from pet owners, continue to grow in numbers and their favorite snacks are native species in the area, some of them endangered. Our nation's forests are feeling the effects of the emerald ash borer. This Asian import hopped a ride on a cargo ship in 2002. Their food of choice is ash trees, including white ash, the wood we use in baseball bats. Introduced to the U.S. in 1991 along the Pacific coast, the Chinese mitten crab is presenting problems with fish passage facilities, water treatment plants, and power facilities. These guys are also on the move. In 2005, a crabber in the Chesapeake Bay caught one near Baltimore, Maryland. The problem with invasive species is not just limited to insects and animals. A growing number of plant species are presenting problems as well. Japanese knotweed, which was introduced as an ornamental plant in the late 1800s, is spreading all over the United States and can grow up to 15 feet tall. Crowding out native plants, limiting diversity, and altering the natural ecosystems, meaning other plants and animals aren't too thrilled with their new neighbors. Would you? I wouldn't be. Hold on. Hydrilla and water hyacinths ventured to the United States as part of a deep, covert, underground aquarium and plant trade. Okay, maybe not that deep and covert, but hydrilla and water hyacinth crowds out native species and impedes irrigation and boating, and they multiply quickly. Nothing like being on a boat and getting caught in a patch of this thick green plant. Plus, they help in a spread of a disease called AVM, which kills many waterfowl birds and bald eagles. These are just a few of the species who are relatively new residents in our nation. There are hundreds more. Alligator weed, Phragmites, Arundo, Eurasian water milfoil, giant salvinia, armored catfish, lionfish, nutria, northern snakehead, European starling, old world climbing fern, where is it climbing to? I don't know, you'll have to ask it. Japanese honeysuckle, sea lamprey, raspberry crazy ants, the Asian longhorn beetle. I could go on, but we need to keep this relatively short and watchable. Non-native species are not only a problem with the continental United States, even Hawaii, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, is dealing with invasive species like Myconia, a fast-growing tree, as well as Veiled and Jackson's chameleons. 
In each case, these species can devastate industries, have lasting consequences on our environment, and forever change the landscape of our great nation. But all is not lost. The Army Corps of Engineers and other federal and state agencies are working together, researching, identifying best practices to control, and in some rare instances, eradicate the invasive pests. At the U.S. Army Environmental Laboratory in Vicksburg, Mississippi, scientists with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers research invasive species and work with other government agencies, academia, and private industry to devise methods to control and keep these unwanted invaders from further damaging our environment. And the work doesn't stop with the Corps of Engineers or the other federal and state agencies. You can have a significant role in slowing the spread of these plants, insects, and animals. When choosing to plant ornamentals or other plants around your home, choose plants that are native to your area. Going boating? Fully clean your boat. Empty all water containers. Clean out water intakes on your vessel away from a body of water to get rid of any unwanted hitchhikers. And if you visit more than one body of water, do this in between taking out of one and putting into the other. Sleeping under the stars? Ah, who wouldn't like that, right? Buy your burn wood locally. Don't transport it. Beetles and insects would love the free ride to their new home. Right, guys? You betcha. Have an unwanted pet? Take it to a shelter. Don't release them to the wild. With your help and the work that state and federal agencies are doing, we can keep these alien invasive species at bay, keeping our economy and ecosystems healthy, winning the battle to keep the local environments invasive free.